We um, interviewed over 300 students, undergraduates here at Kent State to assess their cell phone use, text sent, uh, calls made, and total minutes of use per day. We got 49 to come into the lab. When they came into the lab, we tested cardiorespiratory fitness, we measured body composition, and we did uh, qualitative interviews, asking them how they believed their cell phones affected their leisure behavior. Uh, then we tested the relationship between cell phone use and cardiorespiratory fitness. And the relationship was negative, meaning that the higher the cell phone use, the lower the cardiorespiratory fitness. This is very similar to research that looks at television watching, video game play, what are activities that are traditionally defined as sedentary. So using your cell phone um, a lot is at least from a cardiorespiratory standpoint, seems to be similar to um, watching a lot of television. What is troubling is the fact that the cell phones, because of their portability, it's a constant invitation to sit and play. So before, if you're out walking around and at a park and you said, oh, you know, I'd really like to check the highlights of that baseball game, I'll have to do that when I get home or you know, go back 20 years, I'll have to wait until the evening sports center, go back 30 years, I'll have to wait until the newspaper. Now, you could just sit down at the park instead of walking around anymore and just check the highlights right then and there. And that could lead to, well, after I check those highlights, maybe I'll check some others. Maybe now I'll play a game of Angry Birds. Maybe I'll send a few text messages. And the next thing you know, instead of wandering around the park for an hour, you've been sitting on the bench. Um, so it, it creates constant access to uh, digital media, and if people are sitting while they're using these things, it, it really will probably have the same effects as sitting and watching television or sitting and playing on an internet-connected computer. In some additional research that we just presented at the American College of Sports Medicine National Meeting in Indianapolis, we noted that if you're on a treadmill and you're using your phone to either call or text, you were participants walked more slowly than they did when they were on the treadmill and they didn't have a phone at all. Now, if we let them use the phone to listen to music, they actually went faster than all the other conditions. So it depends on how you're using the phone. If you're using the phone listening to music or using the phone to get in contact with friends that want to go play pick up basketball, or if you're using the phone to, um, to download some kind of nutrition app that helps you eat a more healthful diet, the phone could be very beneficial. There's a lot left to do. I mean, this is by no means conclusive, but it's a, it's a pretty compelling argument, I think, to continue to look at how these phones are affecting our day-to-day -day behavior.